It's a shame, really, that dozens of websites are put up on the internet with a goal in mind to explain God's explanations. How dare they? But they're very clever to look at the seven ecclesias in Revelation and to say it typifies seven church epics or eras. Very clever. You may see some things that might fit, but just because it fits, does that mean it's right? No. I have a website right here. Not mine. I didn't invent this. Uh, let me see here. It's called gotquestions.org, and it's about the seven churches. And somebody asked a legit question here. What do the seven churches in Revelation stand for? You see, there's a problem with the question already. What do the seven churches stand for? There's an assumption there. The question should have been, what do the lampstands stand for? Because, where's my bunker light? Because, I'm going to go to Revelation 4 or 5 later. Wait, wait do you see this? This is good. Uh, because, as we read very plainly in Revelation 1, I think it is, verse 20. Yeah, the seven lampstands are seven churches. Did you get that? The seven lampstands are seven churches. What do the seven churches stand for? They don't stand for anything. The lampstands stand for something. And they're explained. But since we're Christians, we have to interpret things that God already interprets so that we can be the holders of mysteries. And then people come to us to say, what do you think that is? Well, I don't know. What do you think that is? I don't care what anybody thinks it is. Here's the answer. So the, the guy answering this question is sort of okay. He, you know, still, uh, the seven churches described in Revelation 2 and 3 are seven literal churches. I'm Great, thank you. Seven literal churches at the time that John the Apostle was writing Revelation. That's not true. They're churches that will exist in the day of the Lord where John went. Though they were literal churches at the time, there is also a spiritual significance. Uh-oh, here we get into trouble. There is also spiritual significance for churches and believers today. No, believers today. This is the problem. They're taking a message to Israel, to the circumcision, by a circumcisionist, John, and they're saying that you can get truth today from this. You know, that, um, and you can take all the things Jesus says to these ecclesias and personalize it. No, no, truth for you is not found in the book of Revelation, found in the writings of the Apostle Paul. So, do I disagree with that? Vehemently, vehemently. The first purpose of the letters was to communicate with the literal churches and meet their needs at that time. Yes. At the time, though, in the future. The second purpose is to reveal seven different types of individual slash churches throughout history and instruct them in God's truth. That's when the floor opens up and this expositor goes down into the submerged chaos. So we can't confuse anybody anymore. Not only to think that we, members of the body of Christ, are to glean present truth from what Jesus is saying to these ecclesias in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, but to say that um, these churches are a type of church history. And then he goes on. A possible third purpose, even though he just stated it as the second one, is to use the seven churches to foreshadow seven different periods in the history of the church. He does admit this, though. I give him credit for this. The problem with this view is that each of the seven churches describes issues that could fit the church in any time in its history. Exactly. That's the beauty 
for people like preterists and uh, people who see everything as figurative and try to find hidden meanings. That's the beauty of Scripture for them, is that it's a wide, you could apply it to anything. It's, it's like these um, ESP people or these pseudo-spiritists today. They give um, uh, demonstrations to people and they, and they hold an article of clothing. Give me an article of clothing of, you know, give me your lipstick case. And you hold it and you say, I perceive that you have difficulties in your life. <gasps> wow, I do have difficulties in your life. I saw you the other day driving your car. Well, I do have a car. It can apply to anything. Big whoop. What's the big mystery? So anybody can interpret these things a different way. Unfortunately, you're interpreting God's interpretations. So although there may be some truth to the seven churches representing seven eras, there is far too much speculation. Thank you. He's breathing the air of good sense here in this regard. Our focus should be on what message God is giving us. Wrong. He goes back to the mistake. No, our focus should be on what God is giving the Jews of the Lord's day. Listen to this. Our focus should be on what message God is giving us through the seven churches. Wrong. He's not giving us any message. We're looking into this to find the mind of God, to give us understanding of what's going to happen in the end days. We're not looking at this for personal revelations from God because we have those in the 13 letters of the Apostle Paul. I'm happy to tell you. I'm really happy to tell you that. Okay. Um, God's explanations must not suffer further explanation or there's no end to it. Let's explain the explanation. Next thing you know, the explanation might be figured up. So let's explain that. Figures of figures of figures of figures. No. What it is, what finally God says it is, this is that, the that is literal. The this is figured of the that is literal. This is that. Got it? Okay. The next example. Love this. Revelation 4-5. Uh, I'm going to read this to you because that's what I do here. Revelation 4-5. As always, struggling here in the bunker with space. Uh great disadvantages here but let's see okay revelation 4 or 5 let's give this a try and out of the throne are issuing lightnings and voices and thunders and seven torches of fire are burning before the throne i know what the torches of I know what the torches of fire are. The seven torches of fire burning before the throne. Wait a minute. I'm getting a revelation. Hang on a second. Th th this is huge. I know it's not Friday, but can you just hang on one second? Hang on. Don't go away. Seven torches of fire. Hang on. I'll be, I'll be right back. You may you may talk quiet. You may talk quietly among yourselves. I am, I'm so spiritual, it's ridiculous. I'm so spiritual, it's sick. Seven torches of fire. Hmm. Well, first I'm going to read the rest of the scripture. Then I'm going to tell you what they are. Because I... And seven torches of fire are burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I know what the torches of fire are. This is too good, though. Since I'm giving you such a huge revelation, I can't wait for Friday. Did you get that? The seven torches are, are the seven spirits of God. Okay. I'm going to eventually set my beard on fire with a cigar because this thing's been around for weeks. Look, it's a stub right now. Stay with me. The seven torches of fire. I declare to you are seven spirits of God. But furthermore, the seven spirits of God, I know what they are oh my god i know what they are and i not only know that the seven torches are seven spirits of god but i know what the seven spirits of god are 
they are seven spirits of God. They are seven spirits. Seven spiritual beings that belong to God. Did you know that in Hebrews 1 7, God speaks of his messengers, that is, his angels, spiritual beings, as blasts and as flame of fire? Hebrews 1 7 calls them flame of fire. Seven torches. It's a figure for spiritual beings. Seven of them here. It is plain that these seven spirits mentioned here are not figurative. Because they're the explanation of the seven torches. They're literally seven spirits. And they're elsewhere mentioned in scripture as seven messengers who blow the trumpets and who pour out the bowls filled with the last calamities. These same spirits are seen again under a different figure. Sometimes other places they're called seven horns. At one place they're called seven eyes of the lambkin. Seven horns, seven eyes. These are all figurative, seven torches for the same seven spiritual beings who are before the throne of God. We're going to see these over and over in the book of Revelation. John saw seven torches and it mystified him. You remember, John's shocked to see these things. He's shocked to see uh, a dragon, a sun-clothed woman. He's shocked to see um, seven stars in the hand of Christ. What the heck is that? Oh, those are seven messengers. Oh, wow. Look at these seven torches. That's weird. What are those? Oh, those are the seven spirits of God. Yeah, but what are those? Uh, those are the seven spirits of God. But what do they represent? They don't represent anything. They're the seven spirits of God. So it turns out I'm not such a spiritual genius after all. And that is what people hate about taking the word of God literally. You don't have to be a genius. And it takes away their special gift of interpretation. It takes away people coming to them and said, did you get a message on this? Did you get a message? Tell us what's your message. Did, the, did God speak with you? God gave me a message in the dictionary about metaphors. He gave me a message to take the word literally if possible. He gave me a message that his explanations are literal and he says right in the word what they are. Seven torches are seven spirits. I think my beard is about to burn off and uh, this cigar is so old it tastes like um, sawdust from a Ringling Brother circus or something. Sawdust that has been trodden by elephants, clowns, um, camels, and um, other despicable beasts that um, never ask for the restroom key. 